When I think of unforgettable works of art, my mind is immediately drawn to pieces such as Hideaki Anno's Neon Genesis Evangelion, Kanye West, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, and Capcom's Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. However, there's another piece that has recently entered that group, and that's Peter Campus's Three Transitions. Three Transitions is an experimental video in which Campus uses chroma keying, superimposition, and closed circuit cameras to explore his identity. Campus was born in 1937 and raised in New York City. He went on to study experimental psychology at Ohio State University, a field that would inspire later works of art. Soon after graduation, he would move back to New York to attend City College Film Institute, where he would work with artists such as Charles Ross and Jim Jonas until 1970. That's when Campus purchased his first video camera and his career changed forever. In the 70s, Campus used video as a tool to discover the self, to touch upon the metaphysical, and to engage with the viewer. His first two videos, Dynamic Field Series and Double Vision, explored these ideas. These films used techniques that would later be combined into three transitions. Later, he created RGB, a film that uses color and silhouettes as a means of self-discovery, and a work that would go on to inspire the iconic opening to Judd Apatow's Superbad. Campus also produced many video installations with engaging works such as Kiva, Interface, and Optical Sockets. These works turned the attention towards the viewer instead of himself. My favorite of his installations is Interface, a piece that uses plate glass, a projector, and a camera to get this bizarre out-of-body result. Around the 90s, Campus did a complete 180. He began to focus on nature and the exterior and shifted from moving images to still ones. He continued to embrace new technology using computers to create digital images. But he has since returned to video, combining his love of nature and love of technology, creating works such as Wave Sounds, Red Cooler, and Providence. Campus wasn't alone in his endeavors. Fellow artists such as Vito Acconci, Bruce Nauman, and Namjoon Paik were all using video and its new technologies as a mean of expression. Campus and his peers can attribute some of the inspiration for their work to past experimental filmmakers. Surreal artists like Maya Darren and Kenneth Anger used film as a means of exploring their psyche and identity. Also, the structuralist filmmakers of the 60s, such as Michael Snow and Andy Warhol, had a major impact on video art as a whole. The structuralist use of long takes, fixed cameras, and overall minimalism is used heavily in video art. When it comes to video art, one might find that these artists seem a bit obsessed with themselves. But that's what makes video a special medium. Artists can view themselves real-time, transform the image, and explore what it means to be on display. This reflexivity is what makes video art distinctive. Art is an inherently narcissistic practice. One study found that there is a positive relation between the success of an artist and their narcissistic tendencies. And video is a narcissistic medium. In 1976, theorist Rosalind Krauss wrote an essay titled Video, The Aesthetics of Narcissism, where she analyzes famous works of art such as Akanchi Center's Richard Serra's Boomerang and Campus's Door to argue that video is the ultimate medium for narcissism. Combining both video, a narcissistic medium, and art, a narcissistic practice makes video art a powerful device for reflexivity and identity. And with the advent of video platforms like YouTube and Instagram, everyone can be a video artist in the biggest gallery ever created the internet.